What can I tell you? It all starts for me in 1985, June 29 in Paris. That was the day I was reborn, certainly. Since that day, there were so many amazing moments, uh, especially all the concerts in Italy were special. Always great atmosphere. San Siro has something magic. Yeah, I don't have to tell you, you know that. Um, one of the joys of going to a Bruce show is bringing a sign and people get really creative with their signs. My husband is an artist, a graphic artist, and he has made many signs over the years, which you can see some of them here. <laughs> One of my favorite signs has been a sign I have taken for Roy Bitten over the years, probably starting at about 20 years of fandom. This is an example of one. This one is 33 years of joy with Roy, this sign says. And each year that I went to see them, I would up the number, and I'm up to 42 years now. And Roy knows my sign. I've had a couple of wonderful things happen about that. He usually will point at me when he sees it. And when we went to see the band in 2009 in Buffalo, New York, because, yes, we travel for them. <laughs> I've probably been to 15 cities or more. To, including Europe and Australia, to see them. But anyway, we were in Buffalo, and we saw, as we were walking back to our car after the glorious show, which happened to be the last show for their wonderful saxophonist, Clarence Clemens, we saw the limos, and we saw Roy and the bass player, Gary Talent, come out and get into the limo. So I held my sign up, because, of course, I had it, and my husband and son used their flashlights to to light it up and as the limo came through the gate they slowed down rolled down the window and Roy took a picture of my sign the other wonderful highlight was in I was in Paris lucky enough to be in Paris during the river tour in 2016 and I took um, the sign with me and Roy saw it and pointed at it and I was right in the front row and when the band came out to take their bow I heard Gary say to Roy your sign is here. Your sign. So Roy said, yes, I know I saw it. And it just really meant a lot to me that he thinks of that as his sign. <laughs> there aren't a lot of signs for the other players. They're mostly for Bruce. You know, I don't know when it happened. I don't know what year. I don't know why. I just know that people started putting those signs up, you know, whether it be fire, you know, and, and that was that was fun. In Philly, there was a big fire you know, four or five girls, you know, standing up there off to the, you know, you know, Bruce's right shoulder and, and it, it was just a blast or, you know, the fever, you know, I wish I had my fever sign, you know, like how many times I carried the fever and, um, when it got played, whether it was my sign or not, I felt like Bruce was, uh, singing it to me. Uh, <laughs> but there is one song that, um, you know, I, I, I love and it's be true and you know I do have that sign and it's packed away you know with all my Bruce paraphernalia um, all dirty you know because it was thrown on the ground Bruce did not take that sign but I hung on to it and it's you know it's something that you, you keep and you cherish forever um, you know dreams you know it's all about the dream and the reality and if you're lucky he will occasionally take that sign um, these signs have all different things written on them from song requests to requests to get on stage to dance, something that's just completely funny and eye catching. So that is something that's super, super exciting when you're heading into the concert because you don't see that with any other artist and the days leading up to the concert, you go and get your cardboard sign or some people even grab like a pizza box. And, you know, you start planning, okay, what song am I going to ask for or what, what am I going to ask for? And creating that sign is just super, super exciting because the whole time that you're making the sign, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, what if, what if he takes that sign? Because there is a possibility that he just might. So you make your sign, you head in there to the mosh pit and you're waiting, you're enjoying the show. And then at certain points, everyone holds up their signs. And 
There are a lot of signs, so there's a lot of competition out there. 4th of July in Paris 2012, another highlight. Bruce took my sign, which I made to hear Sandy. As you know, my, still my favorite song. And of course it was 4th of July, it was on the set list, but he took my sign and played an amazing version. There was a great interaction. So what, while you're standing there, you're thinking, oh, he's not going to take it because he's just bombarded with so many people and their request. Uh, me personally, in 2014, I was making up a sign for a song and uh, everyone saw me making the sign and they were like to me, don't, no, no, he's not going to play that. Anyway, I had made this sign. I was super excited. I was super proud of this sign. And I thought, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe there's no chance he's going to play it. But I'm still going to take the sign. I spent all day doing it. So we're in the show and I hold up the sign. And to my surprise, he took the sign. To express to you the excitement that you feel when he takes your sign, it's incredible. And some people might not understand why it's so exciting, but if you're a Springsteen fan and you're sitting there and you've hold, you're holding this sign that you've just taken all day to make and he grabs it from you, oh, it's a great feeling. Especially, especially when everyone tells you that, no, nah, he's not going to take that. So it's like a double whammy. It's just, it's such a great feeling. So... He took the sign and he played the song. Um, I had a song request and he played it acoustic and it was the best song of the evening. Maybe I'm being a little bit biased. I thought it was the best song of the whole tour. I will say this. Um, the best part about uh, having a sign at the Blue Show is probably the, the making of the sign. You know, when, you, when you're... Uh, when you're sitting around with uh, a group of fans, you know, four hours before the show, you know, hoping that you're, you know, you get the lucky lottery number for the pit, and you know, you know, all of a sudden, like your creative juices start to flow, and and even though you know in your heart, like what song you want Bruce to sing, you know, you you you, you, you might question yourself. You know, I've done that. You know, I've made a couple different signs, and um, it was more about. You know, sitting there and and hanging out with friends and and going like, okay, well, what are you gonna do? You know, like, and then there's always that one true blue friend, you know, or fan that you know that you're gonna see in the in the pit or somewhere very close to the stage with the same sign, and um, and it just feels great. You know, it feels great to know that. And you can't help but be so thrilled for that friend or that fan that, that you eventually get to meet because of this. It makes it so easy now to meet people, you know, to meet fans, to open up to them, you know, because you can't help but say, you know what, that was a pretty freaking awesome sign. Oh my God, you know, Bruce played your song. Um, you know, it, it made my whole night. Like, I, you know, it was, it, it was, it was the best. But... There's something special about when you're seeing an artist and they have impacted your life so greatly that you look up to them and they've really helped you through their music when you really haven't had anyone else um, to support you when you feel like you've been on your own. And when that individual takes your sign, I feel like deep down it's more than just taking the sign. It's that connection it's that split one-on-one -on -one connection that that person has actually acknowledged you um i'm not quite sure but um i feel like that is part of it as well because as a fan you spend your whole life looking up to them and then for that moment your idol has noticed you Gina, what's the other song you always ask for? First time I met Gina was during Wrecking Ball Tour 2012 in Naples. And it was an amazing time. She was there with a sign for you, her song. Bruce plays that always with so much passion 
and I had the opportunity to, to see that a few times. She's always carrying that sign, so I'm going to throw this one. Now, one of the signs, as I said, my husband does wonderful art, and this sign for the song Frankie, which features um, a drive-in movie, is one that I have carried for many years, and that's the song that I'm chasing. My son and I are chasing, and we have yet to have that song. So, Bruce, if you ever see this, play Frankie for me, okay? It's like we dream things, and, and, and we wish for things to come true, and that's what it feels like, you know, uh, you know, when you're following, um, you're following the music, you're following the man, you're following the band, and, uh... Follow. 